Okay, I, I won't speak on Bursi's behalf on that, but my own view is, I, I was actually uh, quite sick and tired of hearing people say that um, that things have to change, otherwise AMNO would lose the elections. Uh, things have to change uh, because it's bad for AMNO. Everything was about AMNO. Nobody was talking about the interests of the country. And, and for me, that's, that's terrible. And I think uh, Dr. Mahathir says that too. And he actually said um, Barisan would lose the elections the next time round and so on and so forth. So the only reason they want to see change is so that they don't lose the elections. So you know there's a definition, right? What's a statesman? A statesman, um, a politician looks at the next general elections, a statement, statesman looks at the next generation. That's the difference. That's the difference between a politician and a statesman. So I think what I would, uh, what I would say is, and, and I think it's, it's ironic, and, I, and you can see what a mess we're in when even Dr. Mahathir says democracy is dead in Malaysia, okay? That shows you how low we have sunk. Um, and of course, it all started during Dr. Mahathir's time, no doubt about it. The attack on the institutions, the judiciary and so on, was during his time. And um, we're paying for it now. We're paying for it now. And I think what we need to make sure is that our children are not still paying for it. <laughs> and that's my big concern that the next generation is not, number one, paying for a huge debt, okay, which they had no benefit, uh, uh, gain, uh, got no benefit in respect of, and number two, that, um, that they're not inheriting a country that is so broken, uh, it cannot be fixed easily, you know? Uh, I, I don't know whether we've already come to that stage. Maria, that's my worry. I'm not sure if we have uh, very much time left. Okay, um, so this this leads us uh, to the question: What if Bursa succeeds, uh, and uh, you know th there is a, a political landslide, and we we manage a change in government? What would you say should be the guiding principles of the next government so that we do not fall into the same pitfall? Okay, well. Um, for starters, I think we must have limited terms for the Prime Minister um, and that uh, maybe two terms maximum so that we never go through this nonsense again. Uh, number two, that we send our parliamentarians for an education on what democracy really is about because right now when I hear what our leaders are saying, you know, some ministers many of them, it's very frightening actually. Um, so I think there must be a whole change in, uh, in, in the thought process. And I think, Mariam, just following up your earlier question as well, uh, I think when Dr. Mahathir talks about just changing uh, Najib, you're right, it's only to save Amno. He has to talk about reform. Then it makes sense what he's asking for. Because changing one person is not going to change anything. 
Okay? Changing just Najib or whoever is not going to change anything. There has to be a complete overhaul of the system. That is why, uh, that is something that the opposition has been asking for. Look, if you want our support, you've got to pr promise us a reform agenda. Without a reform agenda, nothing is going to change. You know, you're going to have the same system um, of patronage and corruption and so on and so forth. And until we deal with all of that, nothing is going to change in our country. So which is why I think uh, Dr. Mahathir's uh, 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 rhetoric must change. He must start talking about the future of the country and he must start talking about reform. Um, you mentioned earlier about being under the spotlight. You know how politicians should be under the spotlight and uh, be open to criticism. Uh, could you perhaps comment more on that? I mean, for me, actually, pe politicians must get used to being challenged. That the problem in our country is they're not used to being challenged at all. I mean, you know, what you get are pre-recorded interviews, you know, of qu questions that are thrown at, you know, which are hardly anything. There's nothing. They cannot sit in a forum and be cross-examined. Um, and, and that, to me, is something that is missing in our, in our culture. And it stems from a culture of lack of accountability. It stems from the fact that they don't, that they, we never held them accountable, which is why today they don't think they need to account to us for anything. They can give us a story of this donation thing, all right, which I don't know where that came from, but it came from somewhere. They can talk about this donation on a daily basis. I mean, I don't believe it, to be honest. Um, and create this thing about someone giving 2.4 billion. Have you ever heard? And I think Nazri said it was a brotherly move. I mean, it would be nice to have a brother like that, actually, who would give you 2.4 billion. <coughs> so it is because of that, there's a culture of impunity. Because we have never challenged our politicians enough. We're so nice to them. We, are, we bow and scrape to them. We treat them as if they should be on a pedestal when actually we got to treat them like our employees because that ultimately is what they are, right? And I think they need to account to us and that's, that's one thing we really, we really must make sure that that happens actually. They're most welcome to come here, any politician that you know of, to ask them to come here and we will put the spotlight on them. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. I think we need a hard talk for all our politicians, one by one, okay? <laughs> and let's see how they perform. And you know what? It's okay to make mistakes. I would rather a politician who said, yeah, okay, I was wrong in that and I'm sorry, than them saying, I'm not going to answer. Because right now, that's what they're saying. We're not going to answer. Uh, the Prime Minister says, we're investigations taking place. But what do they do to the investigations? They stymie the investigations, okay? They just don't think they need to answer. And then you get this you know, um, patriarchal, do not question anymore. No need to answer any more questions on when and who says? Who says? Who, who are they to say that to us? This is our money that we're talking about. So, for me, they have just taken this culture of impunity to another level altogether with the 1MDB um, fiasco and, and also this donation fiasco. Uh, I, I was saying, I'm Stunned, okay. The one other thing I'm that really, really I'm so uh, that mind boggling is this if they say it's donation, all right, let's just say they're, they're that's correct that it is a donation. How do they realize how many laws they have broken? And then the deputy prime minister comes out and says it was a donation given by someone to keep us in power. Do, know, do they understand what that means? That means they're allowing a foreign power to determine who rules in this country. That means it's our, what they're doing is undermining our voting rights. And it's stunning that they don't think there's anything wrong with saying it. They think it's fine for them to say, oh, they wanted Barisan to stay in power, therefore they gave us the money. They think it's okay. Either they don't know that they've broken I don't know how many laws. We're talking about anti-money laundering. We're talking about uh, the uh, Anti-Corruption Act. We're talking about uh, MACC Act. We're talking about any number of offences that are committed. 
but they don't care. They think it's all right. They don't see anything wrong. And I don't see anyone actually questioning them and saying, don't you think it's, a, it's an offense? And, and many people are saying it. I've been saying it over and over again. I can't believe. I mean, are they getting legal advice or not? Or not? Or don't they care? Don't they care that they are breaching laws? Maybe they don't care because they're getting away with it. There you are, they're getting away with it. If what they are saying is true, this donation story, there is something very wrong with it. And I'm appalled that they think that that, that is a legitimate explanation. But where is the Malaysian right? Yeah. 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 But that comes back to that apathy thing. The Malaysian right yeah, don't protest loud enough, loud enough, or more enough. They should come out, but they don't. They say, never mind, love. Maybe next time we also get chance. Perhaps. <laughs> no, no, I, I think there is that, actually. Um, you see, I think people don't realize the criminality of what is, you know, how criminal these things are, how criminal these acts are, actually. Um, so, and that's what I'm amazed at. And perhaps it's also because they don't know enough, right? And they don't question enough because that's, that's our education system, that's everything. They just don't know enough, they don't question enough. And there is no one there, and, and it would be nice to have a few people in government who do this, who stand up and say, that's not right, actually. They can do it. But if even the UMNO members are prepared to accept that it's okay to, to engage in lawless activities like this, then where do we go? Where do we go? They think it's okay. They think it's okay that a foreign government pumps in two point whatever million, billion and to ensure the success of one party. Can you imagine if that happened here? What would happen? And don't forget, we have anti-money laundering act worldwide, you know, there are anti-money laundering legislation. You can't just move money like that. You can't. So, actually, I'm amazed. I'm amazed at, number one, how they're getting away with it, and number two, how they're even dreaming these things up. <laughs>